Hey, hey, this is Sluggenator1313, and welcome back to the survival world. <laughs> this is episode 31. We're about to reach 32, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's like, uh, whatever, one of those special numbers that computers use. Not sure why yet. Should probably look into that. Anyway, um, yeah, we're back here at the end. We started this base last, at, uh, last episode, <laughs> and I was kind of running out of food and I was scared I was gonna die out here in the end and lose all my stuff but it turns out we have an infinite supply right here <laughs> honey bottles obviously can't believe I didn't think of that oh I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you <gasps> get off of my redstone as I was saying though, last episode we built this large, or well not really large, but we built this storage system, uh, hopefully going to sol solve our storage crisis in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, it works based off of shulker boxes, uh, so here. In these chests you can fill this double chest and the single chest up with shulker boxes, uh, and then if you throw one out here, it'll get dispensed, and you can access the items inside, and then if you throw in another one, it'll get rid of it and make the new one for you and then if you want to get rid of this one without swapping it you can throw in some redstone uh, and it will do that <laughs> so this is great and all but I uh, talked about an issue last episode where sometimes the hopper back here will fill up if you have too many shulker boxes so uh, like we have 27 in here and then back here we have these ones but obviously I can't access those because I can't access the hopper very well. So I found out a way to fix this. And you can tell I'm very excited. I think this solution is uh, a pretty good solution and it might actually have implications in other systems other than this. Uh, so pretty much, this since this hopper is backing up with items and we don't want any items to be in there, we want them either to be in this chest or in this chest. Uh, I, I was I was thinking of using a comparator, so when this chest reaches a full state, like it's full of shulker boxes, it'll send a signal that locks this hopper, so that anything that goes into this system, oh, I, sh I should have brought some redstone power. Anyway, this is locked, so anything that goes into the system will just stay in this top chest here. I have already designed it in my creative world, but I, I need to get more resources and I'm procrastinating that, going all the way back to the overworld, so tell you what, let's let's craft some honey blocks. Wow, look at that. 32, 43 honey blocks. <laughs> Woo, we have so many now. Oh, very cool. Luckily, I found some redstone so I don't have to go back. Oh, dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> anyway, um, so what we're first going to do is make this little circuit over here. This is... Oh, gotta, gotta cut it off. There we go. <laughs> this is going to lock this hopper right here when this chest reaches a certain fullness. Uh, and that fullness is three shulker boxes missing. Uh, there's actually a specific reason for that. I will tell you in a, in a second here. Let's see about this. Like that. Alright, there we go. So you can see that it has power, it's locking the hopper, and then if I take them out, it's still locked, and then if I take this one, I think it should... Yeah, there it goes. Okay. So when this shulker box enters, it locks. Alright, that's good. Okay, so the next step is to rebuild our auto dropper. Uh, let's see, and we're also going to have to change a couple of other things that are going to be in the way at this point. There we go. Yeah, just to, because the auto dropper is actually going to be one block uh, further this direction now. That is because sometimes, see, I need to slow down these items coming through these droppers so that our comparator can register and, you know, lock the hopper in time. And the way I was doing that had a problem because this, when this observer activated, it would activate both this one and this one, both of those droppers. <laughs> so we would essentially be going like twice as fast as I wanted it to go. So that is why, yeah, we're moving everything back one block so that they power it through a block and that way they only activate one dropper at once. So let's see about this. 
to here like that yes <laughs> oh almost fell <laughs> I think so all right so that should be that oh we of course we need we actually need this to still exist here and like that and then cut it off so that it can't maintain power or can't like interfere with this one yeah there we go that should be all done wait wait a minute actually i uh i forgot to delay this that's kind of the whole reason we were doing that all right now it should be done and hopefully ready for a first test Alrighty, we are in the machine here and i'm gonna give it the first test <laughs> so it the if this is all working correctly this orange shulker box should well first of all it should get placed down okay it got placed down and then this red shulker box should come in replace it and then the orange one should appear up in this chest instead of in the hopper back there so moment of truth <gasps> Oh, okay, it worked. It worked. <laughs> That's awesome. So now, uh, yeah, there will never be any items in this hopper unless it, the system knows that the chest can take it. So see, there's none in there, but there is one up there. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Now you're probably wondering about these air spaces here. Uh, that could easily be solved by making this redstone from this comparator here travel a uh, total of 15 blocks, but I chose not to do that. <laughs> so the reason for that is, of course, redstone is a stackable item, and shulker boxes are non-stackable, which means uh, if if I wanted to detect when this was full of stackable, or sorry, non-stackable items, so like full of shulker boxes, uh, it would give a different signal strength than if it was full of shulker boxes with one redstone in. <laughs> uh, and yeah pretty much it would throw off the system if if you have like one redstone in it doesn't give a high enough signal strength to lock the hopper and therefore you're getting items backed up back there so <laughs> yeah that's uh that's why i did that what where did my block from the tree of life go oh <gasps> you you stole from the tree of life how dare you put that back there we go no, not again. There are more of them. Stop it. Stop right there. Thief. Oh, there we go. Okay. Gosh, they keep stealing the dirt from out from under this tree. Oh my goodness, the Endermen are trying to use my storage system. <laughs> Endermen problems aside, <laughs> I uh I took the time to build our our footprint here of our base. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can see this is the maximum size we can go with this base challenge. <laughs> um, it's centered around two chunks, and uh, yeah, it's a 32 by 32 area. You can see where... Well, actually, I'll fly out here. You can see where these blue lines are, like that go horizontal, like right where my feet are. Uh, that's, that's what I use to find the 32 distance here. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I'm planning on filling this, of course, like I said last episode, with all sorts of farms. I'm just wondering which one we should build next. Alright, I have thought about it, and I think I want to build a semi-automatic wood farm. <laughs> so we are going to be growing trees and turning them into a big cube of wood, pretty much, to be harvested later. Uh, and let's see, the way trees grow, it's, it's one, two, three, four, four, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, so there are seven blocks between the top block, like the block that stops the tree from getting any higher, and uh, the dirt block here. Uh, yeah, so this is where we're going to stand, and the tree is going to get bone milled, and I guess the logs are going to get funneled over there, and maybe there will be a cube of logs that will get created. I'm not sure quite yet. Alright, I got the like basic layout here so pretty much this dispenser is going to have bone meal we are going to be standing here creating the trees oh wait actually never mind I think we're gonna have to edit this layout <laughs> probably should have considered this before I started recording so uh, we're gonna need a comparator yeah okay hang on hang on we need to grab this 
and put it somewhere else. And yeah, we're gonna need a comparator coming out on the other side over here. Okay. I moved the machine and yeah, <laughs> now everything should work properly. Uh, pretty much we are using the trick, you know, where you have the logs attached to pistons. Uh, that's because trees, when they grow, they ignore log blocks, so uh, this actually won't, the tree won't be constricted by this, even though it's right next to it, <laughs> uh, if that makes any sense. And yeah, this comparator is what detects when the tree grows, so uh, there's there are of course items in this container over here, and the comparator can read it through a block, but only when there's a block there. So when the tree grows, it'll be able to read it and send a signal to these pistons. Uh, I'll show you that working here. Oh, it worked! Okay, so you can see how it pushed the tree along. Very good. Alright, so now I'm go I have a clock hooked up to this, so it'll spam the dispenser here. And let's see if it makes any trees. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we are creating trees. You can see there's a big line of logs coming out of this thing now. <laughs> that is pretty awesome here. Yeah, you can see it in action. Now, the next step of this is the collection process. <laughs> so, we want to break all of, th or at least most, of the leaves around these trees and give them back to the player so that we can, like, replenish the saplings, right? So, I have, I actually have designed a tree farm in the past, so I'm just going off of the collection system for that. It was a fully automatic one. Uh, this one is just semi-automatic, so it should be less complicated. But, uh, yeah, okay, so we have our hoppers, and I had to move the uh, clock here. This is what uh, pulses that dispenser really quick. Yeah, let's just move it over to here. Okay, <laughs> I, I think that that should be good. Okay, very good. And yeah, now we can add in the hoppers above, and it should all work. Alright, I have been making progress. Turns out we only need one row of hoppers instead of two. So I think like that, yep, alright. And yeah, there we go. So now, and then uh, the pistons are going to be here. There's going to be fence gates on these. Uh, that's what's going to crush the leaves. And if we just have a floor below, the reason we only need one row of hoppers is because if there's an item here, when, let's see, when this piston gets powered, you can see it moves it straight into the hoppers and it all works. Ooh, <laughs> both piston crushers are now in and, uh, yeah, <laughs> see... The actual piston part is done, I just have to add the powering part, so uh, we need to get a way to power this entire wall of pistons, uh, yeah, all at once. So let me work on that. Okay, I think I found a way to power these pistons, that should work pretty well. Uh, you can see we have a checkerboard of repeaters going into the pistons, and then we have just redstone dust on some slabs that connects it all. You can see when I hit this button, the entire wall <laughs> all moves at once. And now I have wired up the other side. <laughs> this thing is looking really cool, especially next to our other circuit. They kind of merge together and it looks like one big one big redstone contraption. <laughs> Though it is two, two that uh, aren't interacting. Anyway, um... Yeah, this one was a little tricky. I had to change some of the wiring, namely this one and some wiring up there in order to uh, in order to make space for it. <laughs> um, yeah, and at this point now I should be able to take the output from this comparator area here and send it to these two walls and they should automatically crush the leaves. I sent a wire from our comparator area over here all the way to our two walls here and it should be working uh, I'll show you what it looks like I've already tested it and I know it works so let's see <laughs> huge lag spike but you can see both of the walls are moving yeah <laughs> really cool 
I went back to the base and gathered some bone meal, so now we can test this uh, with with some real trees. I know, kind of scary. The first test. Let's see what happens. Uh, all right, start the clock. Okay, system is running. It create it's creating the trees just like we want. Okay. Sorry, it's hard to see. <laughs> Now, hopefully, we're getting saplings in here. Oh, yes, we are. Okay. All right, and let's check over here. Are we getting saplings? Oh, yes. Okay. This is perfect. <laughs> uh, see, so, so yeah, that uh, this is actually the tree farm done. Now we're going to build the system that turns it into a block of wood. It is the next real life day, and so my voice might sound a little different, but um, I have something really cool to show you here. <laughs> I've just been working this morning uh, on this this piston pusher. Uh, pretty much when these logs reach the end here, they are going to put a block at this redstone torch, which is going to be able to send power to this redstone and activate it, uh, which is fairly simple. But the thing is, look look at what it looks like. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Oh, it's like a crazy, some kind of Portal 2, like, you know, panel stuff going on here. <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, really, now I just have to test it with our trees. I'll have to go get some more bone meal. Alright, I got some bone meal in the system, and we are going to grow the trees until they reach the end here, and then we're going to watch and see what it looks like. <laughs> so, alright. Oh, right, I have to turn on the thing. There we go. Okay, that's one. Oh, okay, okay. I got it to the point where it's one more tree until it gets pushed over. So let's see. Here, actually, I'm going to turn off the system, place the sapling, and then when, when I turn it on... Oh, get ready. Get ready. Oh, it, it, it worked. Well, it kind of worked. It looks like this piston didn't extend for some reason. All right, that should have fixed it. You can see our entire row of logs, or our entire square, is being pushed across, and then this is how we add the third dimension. So as these logs come in, they will slowly build up and make a cube. So with that done, I decided to start working on the room. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, coming along pretty well here. We have a really good view of this redstone. I, I love this this window here. <laughs> so we can look in and see some of the circuits there. Uh, and yeah, it's got another window down here. And yeah, this is the area where the log cube will be created. And I'm purposefully leaving the top open because the idea is that you harvest from the top. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really have a way to get up there. I guess you should add one. What better way is there to get up than a slime block launcher? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna tr build one here real quick. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> so I I think this should just about do it for our slime block launcher. <laughs> and now let's get back up there. Okay, yeah, let's see, let's see how this thing works. Oh, wait, I forgot. Two ticks. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's check this out. Let's check this out. So, you can go down. Oh, it almost launches you to the top. Oh, it's, it's barely short. No worries, though. I thought it might be interesting to have trapdoors. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> now it now it should put us in the water. Yeah, pretty good. Also, this music is quite loud. Sorry. Still quite loud. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, alright, so you can see when we drop down to our little slime block, it'll just bounce us up into the water. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, alright, um, well, I made a ton of progress here today, and I, I, I really hope you liked watching this, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to stop the episode for today. <laughs>
I, uh, yeah, like I said, really hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.